Fly fishing Puget Sound is a blast. And if you're gonna go after sea run cutthroat trout, here's the six must have flies that you need to go hit the beach. Our first fly is the Gurgler, developed by Jack Gartside on the East Coast. And if I had to only pick one color of this fly, I would pick either the white or the silver. Um, but my second color would be peach. And Jack said that color didn't really matter. He thought that uh, because of the silhouette and the way that the fish see the fly, that it's really the movement, that the color is more for you so that you can see it on the water. And I think that, that there's some validity to that and I'm not really gonna argue with the legend. But what I do know is that this thing works and it imitates a bait fish that has been injured and is just kind of motoring around on the surface. They, you'll see them out there kind of doing that too. And uh, this has been a super effective fly for me fishing it year round. Though in the summertime when it's really hot, really sunny, the fish don't really wanna come up for this one. And then you wanna go subsurface. I like fishing this on a longer leader, like on a nine foot or even like a bonefish 10 foot, eight pound leader. Just a long steady retrieve. It doesn't need to be popping like a bass popper. Think of it motoring on the surface like an injured bait fish. Our number two fly for cutthroat trout is the Sea Run Bugger. And this fly is, imitates a sculpin and it's weighted and there's little brass eyes on here and so it will sink. So you can fish it on a floating line, but it definitely fishes more effectively on an intermediate line. If you think about being on the beach, casting out into deeper water, you might be casting into five, six feet of water or even maybe 10 or 12 feet of water. The sculpin is not a bait fish that is gonna be suspended in the middle of the column or at the surface. These guys like to be around the bottom, around the rock and the gravel, uh, and that's where they hide. Now, one tip for retrieving this fly is that you wanna make this fly look as anxious and nervous as possible, like it doesn't want to be lunch, like it's on the lookout. Anglers make their cast, sometimes they just get in this, this robotic rhythm of just stripping the line in, but you want this thing to pause and jump and look scared. Our number three fly is the Cutthroat Surf Candy Fly. And the surf candy was originated for fishing saltwater on the East Coast. And so this little uh, scaled down version for Puget Sound Cutthroat is really small. And one of the surprising things is we did some underwater video footage of this fly. We were under the assumption that it wouldn't have a lot of movement. We really liked the profile and the look, the flash, everything is great. But we figured that with this epoxied body here, that there wouldn't be a lot of movement in the water. And we found the opposite to be true. Because of this epoxied body, the thing sinks like a rock through the water because there's not a lot of resistance. And then as you strip it and it jumps up, th that tail has just so much movement in it because those fibers are so thin. This is a really good fly when there's small bait fish around like salmon fry. It's a good spring time fly. All of the colors work really well. The olive one is probably the most popular and we're actually experimenting with some new colors also. Number four is Sean Larson's flat wing. And if I had to pick one color, it would be the olive color. This fly is a great fly for imitating sand lance and larger bait fish, especially in mid to late summer and into the fall. There's been plenty of times too, where we've had coho eat this fly off the beach. Uh, and so even for that time period in September when there's coho around, sometimes you don't know what's gonna eat this fly. It's pretty cool. Sean Larson is a creative fly tire and we actually featured him on some of our videos. So make sure you check out that link. Number five is Dave's Ghost Bugger. And now the bugger comes in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. And Dave came up with some really creative stuff around this one. The white and pink is our most popular color. And this is our number one selling fly in the shop, but we have several other colors and they all work really well. I really like the peach and yellow in the winter time, but if I could only have one, it would be this guy in the size 10. It's on an A-Rex traditional shrimp hook. And so this hook, it, it, even though it's a size 10, it looks more like a size six or an eight compared to other hooks. We've had so many coho eat this thing in the fall that we started tying it two sizes bigger as well. And that's been a really popular fly, especially the white chartreuse and the white pink and the orange. Those have all been great. I think fish take this thing as a bait fish pattern. And when you see it in the water, it just lights up and it's really fun to see that fly when you're retrieving it in, see it disappear because a fish has grabbed it. Before I share this last fly, if you have found this video helpful, can you hit that like button so other people can find it too? Thanks. Number six is the tree rat. And the tree rat, when I came up with this pattern, I was thinking more about the profile of a sculpin because sculpins are an important year round food for sea run cutthroat trout. 
What we didn't realize was the movement this thing had in the water. And all of us were surprised when we saw the video footage of the underwater movement of this fly and how it dips and dives. The brass eyes on there really help that thing sink. So you can fish it with a floating line, but we really prefer to fish it with an intermediate line. And then that rabbit strip tail on there just really has so much movement. It really attracts the fish and gets them to hit it. For colors, you really can't go wrong with the tan or the olive. I probably grab the tan first. Just like freshwater trout, there's different seasons to sea run cutthroat trout in the salt water. And just like how some of the food is available to them all year, some of it is only seasonally. In the description below, I have links to all these flies, but we also have a link for our fly assortments for sea run cutthroat trout. And we've actually assembled four of these different assortments based on the seasons. And so if you're brand new, if you know you're gonna be hitting the beach, grabbing one of these assortments is a great way to go. If you're a fly tier, we have videos for a lot of these flies on how to tie them. And we also have material kits available for these flies. We really love to hear from you. Do you have a sea run cutthroat fly that you think should have been on this list? Let us know in the comments below.